The world of HBCU football lost a legend over the weekend with the passing of Ken Riley. The former FAMU great was a quarterback for the Rattlers in the 1960s, but the NFL wasn't quite ready for black quarterbacks when he was selected by the Cincinnati Bengals in 1969. I never played defensive back before. I was uh, pampered as a quarterback in high school and in college. And when I got there, when you look at guys coming from USC, from the, from the major university, I'm from a little small school, I had my work cut out for me. Riley's character was sharpened and challenged during his time at FAMU when he played for the legendary Jake Gaither. One particular moment impacted Riley for the rest of his life. Well, some of the things that uh, he instilled me about being honest, uh, integrity, uh, when you finish your career and you start your life working, going back into your community and be the best citizen you can be. Uh, he was concerned about you as a fatherly figure. Uh, one perfect example, you know, I never liked spring practice. As a matter of fact, the only time I got hurt was in spring. So during that particular time, uh, we had the set up here at FAMU. And everybody was on this set. And I had two or four days. I got to go and do an assignment for my class. I said, okay, baby, because he was real strong and academic. Go ahead on. And uh, he came by in this, in, the, in this car, Lincoln, and we were all sitting up on the hill watching the girls. And lo and behold, I saw everybody scattering. I wasn't even paying any attention. And that was Coach Gates. He comes up there and get his mail out of the mailbox. And I scattered too. I didn't know he saw me. The next day I go back to the class and he come and get me out of class and uh, he said, baby, sit down. I was his quarterback. He said, you know, you're supposed to be the leader of my football team. You're one of my captains and you lied to me, baby. He said, that's the most dishonest thing you can ever do. He said, how can I trust you if you do what you're doing now? If you're gonna lead my football team, and, and I don't have any confidence on you. And it's, and, and, you know, I thought about it for a while, and boy, I felt like a little mouse. I mean, that stuck with me to this day, and I tell that story all the time about honesty and, and about leadership. You gotta lead, you gotta lead in a positive way because it makes a big difference in, in, in who followed you and who you were following. So that was an example for me that stuck with me the rest of my life. Riley was an exceptional athlete, transitioning to defense for the first time in his career as a professional. And when the opportunity to start presented itself, he never looked back. I remember a guy named Eric Crabtree. He would just beat me all day long running the pass routes. And then they threw a little five yard quick out. And I planted and, and intercepted the pass and I got some attention. Boy, this guy is really quick. Got quick hands, quick feet. And I went on and a guy named Charlie King, about fifth game in this season, he got hurt. They put me in, and that's the rest of history. He never got his job back. Riley played until 1983, having an all-pro season in his final year. And over the course of his 15-year career, Riley picked up 65 interceptions, which was the fourth most in NFL history at the time of his retirement. He currently ranks fifth. But Riley has never received the accolades that those numbers would suggest. He's not a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame and isn't often mentioned in conversations with the all-time greats. It could be because a lack of self-promotion and bravado, something that just wasn't part of Riley's personality. Me having been a quarterback, I was always in the leadership position, so I wasn't a brass guy. I was just, I did my job. And every coach that I had from high school all the way up to uh, the NFL, uh, you know, I was always taught humility, let your work speak for you. And I, I went unnoticed. There was some times, I mean, I laid the conference three times in interception. My last two as a, as a player, retired, eight interceptions. I was 36 years old. Still started all games, you know, but it went unnoticed. And uh, that's something that, you know, I can't control. There are some guys that are in there, don't have the numbers that I have. I played in 207 football games. Not only that, I was durable. I, got, I played in more games than anybody in Cincinnati's history. So, but all those things go unnoticed. And I was, I tell people, say, who is this guy, Ken Ryder? Why is nobody 
you know, say it, uh, why is he in the Hall of Fame? And, and, and I get more of that from other people after they see my stats because they just didn't know because I was, and in Cincinnati, we were not publicized. I mean, we, we were not glorified, so to speak. Paul Brown's philosophy is you go out and you, that's what I'm paying you to do. And uh, there are a lot of guys that uh, had great careers there, but went unnoticed, and I was one of those guys. Ken Riley is a member of the Bengals Hall of Fame, the Black College Football Hall of Fame, and the FAMU Athletics Hall of Fame. He is the only player ranking among the NFL top five career interception leaders not to be enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Riley would return to FAMU as head coach in 1986, leading his team to the 1990 MEAC championship. The world will certainly miss former FAMU great, Ken Riley. Thank you.